Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric, and we're continuing the series on the Mr. FPGA DE10 Nano Project. And today what we're doing is revising our setup guide for Mr. and doing a 2022 buying guide, because a lot more people are getting into Mr. I've been getting a lot more of the same questions I saw a year ago, and some information has changed, so let's jump right into it. Before we get to find involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, that notification bell definitely helps us out. If you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, i got a Patreon link down below as well. But Mr. is an interesting device because everything you see on the screen is technically not required. I've seen a lot of comments about how expensive Mr. is, and you don't need to go whole hog right off the top. You just need the DE10 nano board, some RAM, and a USB hub and power supply. Sure, you can go with a full stack, and that's probably the best way to start. But another question I keep getting is, do you need one stick of RAM or two? Just get one 128 megabyte stick of RAM at this point in time. That's going to allow you to play the largest ROMs on the system, stuff like the Neo Geo Core or the Capcom CPS2. But right now, there's not that many cores that even function on two RAM sticks. So honestly, I recommend you just get one. Because if you want two RAM sticks, you cannot use the analog I.O. board. And that is one of my favorite parts of Mr. getting that crispy RGB video out of the unit itself with two sticks, that's just not going to happen with that board. Now remember, you can go direct video, HDMI, to some sort of analog source, and the Mr. does give you the ability to do that. So if you do need to use dual RAM, I recommend that, but again, right now, it doesn't seem to be super essential because I love the analog video. You get amazing results out of it, whether you're using RGB or component video. It is one of my favorite use cases for the Mister. So right now, I recommend just getting that 128 megabyte module, but don't go any smaller than that because having that analog I/O board allows so many ways to play Mister, and that's what I really love about the device: the versatility. Because, like I said, the analog is amazing, but for dual RAM cores that function. PlayStation 1 allows for dual RAM, but it's working basically perfectly on a single stick of RAM. Now also, the in-progress Sega Saturn Core works on both one and two sticks of RAM. It is unknown if it's going to need two. So if you want to future-proof it, buy a second stick, but honestly, I'm fine with the one. Another thing you're going to need is a decent power supply, because you'll see we have those barrel plugs there and that HDMI out next to it. This power supply I have right here, I'll leave a link below has been perfectly fine for me, including using the MT32 Pi Hat. And I love this pigtail that takes the one power in and splits it for both the USB hub as well as the DE10 nano board itself. Now something that I always get comments about is, I put the SD card in and it's not reading. That's because the SD card slot on the I.O. board is not where you put the main installation. It's actually on the DE10 nano board and it's underneath it. So just be aware of that. It really trips a lot of beginners up. But you'll see here, like I said, you can just use a USB hub, and I'll leave a link to Amazon below, but the USB board that comes as a kit or as a separate device is highly recommended as well. You'll see we have Ethernet, and then there is a USB bridge to connect the DE10 Nano to that hub. All really nice parts. I think you should just spend the money once and be done with it, but I get that people like to add pieces to their mister, so you can do whatever you want. But you'll see on the USB board, there are more than enough inputs. You're going to have inputs for days. But another thing I see tripping newcomers up is you're going to see here on the top, there is a USB port. Now remember, ports are just shapes. It's how they're wired up. And it's going to say not USB user port. This is not where you plug your controllers in. This is a multi-purpose port. And I use it for the MT32 Pi Hat to get MIDI out of certain cores. It's a USB connector, but it is not USB. And I know that can sound confusing, but just like that VGA port, on the analog IO board is not just VGA. Ports are just functional shapes. How they're wired up is completely different. So that top user USB port there is not where you put your controllers. I see a lot of people saying, my controller is not functioning, my keyboard is not working, why is that? And I find nine times out of 10, it's because they use the user port. But touching on the MT32 Pi Hat, this is not required for Mr. But if you have a little extra money to spend, I think you should pick one up when you buy it because listen to this amazing audio it provides. Oh. 
I think it's worth it, but everybody gets to make their own decisions. But now that we've got a little bit over the hardware, what you need and what you can just kind of pick, we have to actually get software on the Mr. itself. And for that, the method is still Mr. Fusion. Like I said, some things in this video are going to be the same from last year, but there are a lot of different and new ways to get cores and other things on your Mr. And the video from last year is slightly outdated. You're still going to need some sort of disk imager and you're going to want to download Mr. Fusion. At the recording of this video, it's 2.5. It was 2.2 when I did this video last year. But you're just going to download that zip file and that is going to set up the entire Mr. operating system after we go through a few more steps. And it now uses the downloader script, which is different than the update and update all script from last year. Mr. Downloader is an awesome way to function, but how I'm going to suggest you use it is actually the following. You're going to download the update all script and I will leave all the links in the description below because that runs the Mr. Downloader, which is a new way to update the Mr. in the last six months or so. But it's going to give you so many more options. It's going to update the main distribution. You can also enable it to download all the Hotego cores, both public and his Patreon. I'm a member. Maybe you should be too. You can get some unofficial cores that are pretty much stable, but not official yet. You can also do some other cores that are available for the blister. It's a different control setup that I'm not going to be talking about here. You can get some patched arcade games and other things. I highly recommend using Update All because the BIOS getter is hugely important. It's going to bring all your BIOS files you need over. It's also going to pull all of the ROMs for the arcade cores. And most importantly, because there's a ton of arcade cores, it's going to organize all of your games into folders so that it's intelligently set up. I will show you more about that in a bit. Download that zip file and we'll come back to it shortly. But now that you have Mr. Fusion and Update All, all we need to do is take whatever micro SD card you want to use and we need to format it. I use Windows, so I use Win32 Disk Imager. And I just want to tell you something right now. Once you unpack the image for Mr. Fusion, we're going to format an SD card that we put into the machine with that image. But these programs will let you image whatever drive you pick. So make sure you check your drive letters. Once you put that USB, micro USB card in, make sure you're actually formatting the right one because it is hyper important. You really don't want to screw it up. But all we'll do is go ahead and we'll check that drive letter just to make sure the size of the card you put in is correct and that there's nothing on that card. You'll go ahead and select the drive letter right here. And like I said again, don't screw this up and yell at me. And we'll just take that Mr. Fusion image. It's supposed to be 2.5, but this is older footage because it is identical. And we're just going to write it over to the card. And that will set up the micro USB card so you can pop it right into your Mr. And everything will start to install the operating system. This takes like a minute to two minutes. Just go ahead and wait it out. And when it is ready, you're going to get a little bit of a notification on your screen that it is fully written and you will be ready to go. Just be patient. Sometimes it's really quick. Sometimes it's not quick at all. I don't know why. Once you get right successful, go ahead and pop that micro USB card right back into that middle board. Plug it into a TV and turn it on. You're going to see a screen that says Mr. Fusion. That means it's installing Mr. This takes between a minute to two minutes. Don't think it froze. It'll just sit there until it blanks out. And suddenly you're going to have the Mr. menu on your television. But we're not done yet. There's nothing functional on that we can use. So go ahead and take that micro SD card back out of your DE10 nano board and come right back over to Windows because we want to pop that update all script into the update folder. So just go ahead and navigate to your Mr. Data, whatever drive letter that is. You're going to go under scripts and you're going to just copy that update all script that you unzipped over here. You can copy and paste it. You can drag and drop it. But now that it's on there, we're really ready to go. And if you haven't figured it out by now, we're going to take that micro SD card back out of our computer Windows or Mac and we're gonna pop it right back into the middle just be careful when you do this the solder joints are small it's not defective and it's not a problem but just don't go Hulk strong on that you're gonna need to use a keyboard to navigate around for this first little bit whatever USB keyboard you want to use works perfectly fine and we're just going to define the joystick buttons first that way you can use a controller because a keyboard unless you're using some of the PC cores kind of becomes is not essential keep it near your mister but otherwise you don't need to do much with it and just follow the on-screen prompts until you are done defining the keys now you are going to see in the menu stuff like mouse 
support. If we're not using that on the controller, just push the user button or the space bar on your keyboard if you don't have an analog I.O. to bypass things you don't need. But definitely make sure you bind a menu. That's what's going to bring the menu core up and close it. That's a super important thing and I see a lot of people forgetting to bind that because they just skip by it. And talking about controllers, the sky is pretty much the limit. If it works via USB, it's going to pretty much work via Mister. Now you can use wireless controllers, and I do on occasion, but honestly, they do have more latency, and each controller is going to be sort of different. So what I do 99 out of 100 times that I'm playing my Mister, I use a controller that is hardwired in via USB. It's just what I recommend. But now that we have a controller set up, we're going to come up here to scripts, and it's going to give you a warning. It's a dangerous operation. The worst thing you can do by screwing up here is your micro SD card will have to go back through the Mr. Fusion process. You can't damage the hardware. So people get a little bit spooked by this screen, but trust me, there really isn't any reason to. All you're going to lose the most part is time. If you execute the update all script and you get a warning that there's no internet connection, that means you forgot to plug in your ethernet cord, so go ahead and do that. You can get Wi-Fi in Mister. I haven't found it to be very reliable, so I highly recommend just using the ethernet port. And when you do have that internet, just hold up on the controller when you execute the cord to get to the menu. We showed you those options in the update all GitHub page, but this is going to be really important. It's got all the different download options for all all the different portions of Mr. that you may or may not want to use. You get to decide what you want. If you want to get all the Hotego cores, the public ones, and I highly recommend that, just go ahead and into the menu, you're going to activate it. It says true. If you're a Patreon member, you can also get the premium cores. I am, so I will select yes. And all you do is hit back and we go right back to the options. I don't usually deal with the unofficial cores because I install them manually. If you want unofficial cores, you're going to enable that there. And I also don't deal with those forks. The BIOS is enabled by default, and trust me, you're going to want to leave that enabled. If you're going to play arcade games, the MAME getter, go ahead and activate that. Activated equals true. It's now going to pull those ROMs from archive.org, and that's going to be super important, or else you're going to have cores that when you try to launch them, it's not going to find the files. HP MAME, I recommend enabling that as true as well. 10 out of 10 times when somebody messages me and says they can't get an arcade core to run, it is because they don't actually have the ROM files. So you definitely want to make those enabled. And definitely enable organizer. There are a metric crap ton of cores for Mr. on the arcade side. Organizer is going to organize them into manufacturer, into year, into so many different options. It's so much easier than scrolling, you know, a hundred pages. If you want to save these options, hit save and to run it, just hit exit and run update all. I'm going to abort because I don't need to do it, but it will take like 35, 45 minutes the first time. Just be patient. But take that card back out because we need to get some console games on it as well because don't forget, Mr. isn't just an arcade device, it's also a console device. If you go under games, you're going to see folders for every platform that's currently available on Mr. And what I'm going to do is just show you one simple game here. It's the ROM for Yoshi's Island on the Super Nintendo. You have to unzip it, or at least I do, and you're going to go ahead and copy that game over to the SNES folder, or you can drag and drop it. That's how you put ROMs on the Mister. You can do it over Ethernet too, but I honestly just take the card out of the Mister. I find it to be easier. And each cord needs the buttons defined. Just because you defined the buttons in the main Mister menu does not mean that each cord knows what the definitions are going to be. So make sure you rebind your controller in each individual core that you're going to be using. Because a lot of times when people say they're having issues with control in a core, in comments I find that they never bound the controller for that individual core. Select your ROM, wait a few seconds, and then magically, suddenly, your mister is going to be a Super Nintendo playing Yoshi's Island. It is that simple. Now, I have a playlist, and it has probably at this point like a hundred different mister videos in it, and they are on all subjects. This video is for people that are new getting into mister because things have changed since I did this last year, but it is still an absolutely incredible ecosystem that I can't recommend enough. I also suggest you join the official mister discord. I'll leave a link down below as well so you can chat with people and get some unofficial cores. But if you have any issues with this, just leave me a comment. People that know me know I'm very happy to help you get up and running. Sure, that I'll have another video on Mr. Next Week and videos throughout the week as well, but hit like and subscribe and we'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.